Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So for this video, I'm going to be doing a, another Stephen King book review. And for this book review, I'm going to be reviewing Cujo, which uh, I forgot to look up the, the year this came out. I, I believe this was 1981, early 80s, and I don't remember the number of books. Uh, maybe, 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 you know what, whatever. Uh, it's, it was written in the early 80s, very classic. Most people know about it, maybe... Not a lot of people have read it before, but usually if you say the name Cujo, they know you're talking about a rabid dog. And just right off the back, if you just want my quick review of this book, one of my favorites, like I said, I love this book. Not necessarily a perfect book, but I would give this four and a half stars. One of my favorites, I really like it. And I know a lot of people don't, or they think it's overrated. I think the majority of people who read this book wish it was shorter, uh, which is funny because it's one of his shortest books. It's like three, it's like barely over 300 pages. But most people, their general review of the book is like, oh, the first half is not that good. It's kind of boring. And then the second half, where we actually get to the main point of, you know, a, a, a mother and a son being locked in a car in Cujo trying to get after them and trying to keep away from the dog. They love that bit. They love that half. But most people don't love the first half. Whereas me, I love it all. So, it, like I said, it is one of my favorites. But I understand the gripes a lot of people have with this book. And we're going to, this is going to be kind of a non-script review. So I'm just going to be going all over the place. So <laughs> without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So like I said, Cujo is definitely one of my favorites. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily love the first half. And what I mean by that is that the first half is basically all about different people in Castle Rock. Oh yeah, and that's, that's another point of this book. If you enjoy Castle Rock and the Castle Rock lore. This is one of them. This was written, uh, I think the Dead Zone was the first Castle Rock book, and this was written after that. There is a small connection to the Dead Zone. So if you enjoy the Dead Zone and just Castle Rock in general, this is one of the Castle Rock novels. So definitely uh, look into that. But uh, like I said, the first half of the book is kind of more drama-based. Uh, the first chapter... Or, oh, oh, yeah, that's another thing, too. That's an, <laughs> Like I said, this is non-scripted. Uh, another weird thing about this book is that it, it does not have chapters. Stephen King books usually have some sort of structure to them. But for, for this one, it's literally just... Th there are, like, I guess, chapter breaks, where there's breaks in between POVs. But there's not like a, oh, this is chapter one, this is chapter two, this is chapter 15 or whatever. There, there's no chapters. So which I normally don't like. I, I, I love structured, structured books normally. There are a few exceptions, and of course this is one of them. But normally I'm just like, why? Like, just, just, just put a number on them and split them up. Do something. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I like, I don't know. Like, I like chapters, is what I'm trying to say. But this book doesn't have any. And I think when I was first trying to read it, because I've read this several times, that definitely bugged me. I was just like, there's no good stopping point here. Like, this this sucks. But if, if you know the story well enough, you know, you can kind of just go into it and it doesn't bother me anymore. Also, I listen to the audiobook, so it doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is definitely an interesting point to this book. Also, Stephen King himself says that he doesn't even remember writing this book which I think is pretty funny because he was definitely drugged out of his mind at this point, or maybe it was, al it was, it was alcohol and drugs. I don't really know like what era, but 
you know, he doesn't remember writing this book. He was probably coked out of his mind. And that's a shame because I really like this book. And it is a classic among Stephen King constant readers. And, you know, he, he doesn't even remember, like, the process of writing it. Which I, it's always fascinating to me. Because he's written so many books and he's just like, oh yeah, I don't remember doing that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, oh god. Where do, where do I where do I even go from here? Oh yeah, the, the first half of the book. You can definitely tell that this is not structured. Another interesting point of this book is that you do get perspectives from Cujo himself, which I think is pretty interesting. It starts out literally with Cujo like chasing a bunny. Pretty, in this, pretty innocent, St. Bernard, just chasing a bunny, doing his thing. And then the rabbit goes down a rabbit hole and he sticks his head in there and then what happens he gets bitten by a bat and no one knows it at the time but he gets rabies which takes some time to um display obviously um but yeah you get that and very sad and also that's another point like if you're a big if you're a big animal lover like especially for dogs you, you might have a hard time reading this book. I mean, I love dogs. I've had dogs my entire life, but it, it doesn't really bother me. But if you really don't like animal abuse or just seeing bad things happen to animals, don't read this book. It's not for you. <laughs> like, and, and it's sad too, because Cujo is definitely, I mean, he's technically the villain, right? But also it's not his fault. Like, he has no control over this. So th there is kind of that mixed emotion, too, where it's like, you know, from the mom's perspective, like, Cujo is trying to kill her, and he needs to be stopped, but it's not his fault. So that's very sad. But getting back to my point, of which I'm trying to, I've been trying to say for the last, like, four minutes, basically the first half of the book, it, it starts out with Cujo, right? And then from there, you get this family... Uh, uh, the mother and the wife and the son. I don't remember the dad's name, but uh, I think it's Donna is the mom's name and then Tad is the son. You get bits and pieces from them and then you realize that Donna is having an affair and then th there's this whole thing of like um, the dad, his company, his advertising company is going under because this stupid serial thing you know, a, a lot of people don't like that part, but I, I think it's fascinating. I, I like these characters. So getting all of that is very good. And then also while all of that is happening, you're getting the family of Cujo, the family that owns Cujo, and they're going through their own problems. And I think that's really good too. You got, you know, uh, you know, ma another uh, mom, dad, and son situation this one is a lot worse because the the dad is not the best. And then the mom is basically trying to get her son out of there. So like I said, there's just a lot of family drama happening between these. And it can kind of seem meandering at first because you're just like, okay, what does this have to do with Cujo? I thought this was about a rabid dog. But it's basically just all set up for how they get into the situation because... Uh, Donna, the mom, and Tad basically are having car problems throughout the book. And then uh, her husband, he, he goes out to fly to, to the... Um, he, he flies out to... Uh, I don't even know where, but to go deal with the, the, the advertisement stuff that's going on because they're having a big crisis and they need to figure out what to do. So he flies out, so he's out of town. And then, uh, like I said, the family drama with the family who owns the dog, uh, she she secretly like won some money, and then he <laughs> she takes her kid to like on a trip, but really they're just getting the hell out of there and leaving behind the dad, and the dad's stuck there, and of course the dad doesn't even know about Cujo, but. Of, Eventually, Cujo starts really showing signs, and yeah. <laughs> I, 
I guess I'm turning this into a spoiler review. I thought I was going to be doing a spoiler-free review, but this is definitely turning into a spoiler review. So, uh, yeah, be warned about that. But yeah, uh, and, and of course, you know, who does Donna take the truck to? Like, he takes the, uh, not the truck, but the car to him because he's a mechanic and he's going to look at it. He They already took him one time and they saw Cujo. And Cujo was, he was obviously rabid at that point, but he was just a nice dog. But then the problem arises when, after Cujo kills him, uh, the, the owner, and then Donna takes her car up to him again, uh, she's shocked to find that, that no one's there. And also there's a rabid dog trying to kill her. And it's in the middle of, of summer. And of course she didn't have any food or water because she was just going to get him to fix her car so they're both locked up in the car nowhere to go nowhere to call no one's there they don't have any food or water it's really hot out in the summer and they are stuck in this car because of this rabid dog Cujo and then of course like, like I said no one's there and then also her husband is out of town it has no way to contact her and he's dealing with the serial advertisement stuff. So basically the first half of the book is just all set up for this. And I can see why people have an issue with it. Just could, They probably would just have rathered it start with Donna going up to get her truck fixed. And then all of a sudden there's a rabbit dog. Which I think wouldn't have worked as well. I liked the build up to it. I liked getting all of the character motivations and all of that stuff and, and all the family drama. I, I think it builds the tension. And as you're, as you're going, you're slowly starting to realize that Cujo is getting worse and worse, which can be hard to read at times, you know, like I said, especially for dog lovers. But I just think it worked brilliantly. And then by the time you get to that point, it's very scary. And also one of the points I wanted to get across is that Stephen King writes realistic horror very well. And, you know, like some of his books, like It and other stuff, like The Shining, those books don't really scare me as much as stuff like Cujo and Misery and Gerald's Game all have very realistic takes on horror. Whereas stuff like Pennywise really doesn't scare me that much. I think King is at his top game in horror when it's grounded in reality. And this book is definitely grounded in reality because, it, I mean, it is a bit far-fetched and obviously today's standards, like you would just have a cell phone. But like this is, you know, like in the, the late 70s, early 80s, like what the hell are you going to do, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think this book is one of his scariest because it could happen. And then obviously the second half of the novel deals with Donna and Tad in the car trying to figure out what to do and then her husband trying to get in contact with them and trying to figure out what's going on and then yeah it's it's very tense <laughs> and then you know throughout the book you realize that the kid is basically slowly dying of dehydration it's very sad and then you get to the end of the book and you know, definitely, you know, if you haven't read the book, like this whole video has been spoilery. So spo major spoilers for the ending here. I thought I was going to do a spoiler free review, but apparently not. Um, but yeah, you basically get to the end and the, the, the kid dies. Um, the, uh, the husband gets there, not just in time because the kid dies, but also to save his wife, Donna. And they kill Cujo, who's been terrorizing them this whole second half of the book. And it's very sad. Because, obviously, like I said, the, the villain of Cujo wasn't his fault, obviously. It's not like it's it's a demon dog trying to get them. It's a dog that was a, a good boy, but he got bit by a bat and got rabies. And wanted to kill Donna and Tad, for whatever reason. But, but yeah, um... And then obviously the kid dying, like the first time I read this, and this is another point, if you've seen the movie, you know that the movie ending is very different. Basically, it's the same except the boy lives. 
So probably the movie didn't want to have such a bummer ending for audiences because that would be a bold move to kill off a kid in the early 80s. And this was a bold move by Stephen King doing it in a book, too. And like I said, I grew up watching Stephen King movies. So reading this book, I pretty much knew what was going to happen the whole time. But then I get to that ending and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, holy crap, he killed the kid. And it was very depressing. And honestly, that's the main thing keeping this book from being five stars is that ending. I would have rather the kid lived, Tad. I, I, It's just such a bummer ending. Like, you get to the end and you're like, oh, man. Oh, the kid dies. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and that's why I kind of prefer the movie better. I mean, the, if you haven't seen the movie, it's one of the best Stephen King adaptations. It's very faithful, basically the same exact story, except the, the kid lives, <laughs> which probably a smart idea by Hollywood. Um, but yeah, the book ends basically with like the parents trying to deal with the kid's death and for a few pages, and it's very sad. Um, but everything before that was great. <laughs> Uh, uh, what else do I want to say about Cujo? I think that might be it, actually. Um, this review did not go according to plan. Like, I mean, I, I didn't have a plan, which was probably my first mistake. But originally, I wanted to make this a spoiler-free review, mainly so that more people would want to watch it. But it definitely did not turn out that way. I spoiled the shit out of this book. So hopefully if you're watching this, you've already read the book because I basically talked about the whole book. There's a, there's a few things that I probably didn't mention, but basically you know the whole book now. Um, but yeah, my thoughts on the book. I love it. Four and a half stars. I don't love the ending. I prefer the movie ending. And I know a lot of people don't love the first half, but I think it, it's crucial setup for the second half. And I think that's why it works so well. I loved the drama and I loved the characters. And then, you know, he gets you to love the characters and to get invested in them and then puts them through the ringer, which King is very good at doing at, at that. That doesn't make sense. King is very good at doing that. And he's been doing it his whole career. He gets you invested in the characters and then puts them in a situation that gets you to fear for their lives. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, definitely one of my favorites, like I've said. It's in, I think it's in my top 20, maybe even top 15. Very good. I love this book. Um, yeah, and it's definitely one of the scariest books, too. And I also think it's just hilarious that King <laughs> doesn't remember writing this book. So, uh, that turned out to be my spoiler-filled <laughs> review for Cujo. And like I said, I was not planning on doing that, but that's just how it happens. And yeah, I did not have a plan and that's how it went down, but that's okay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and definitely comment down below if you've read Cujo and if you enjoyed it or not, definitely leave your thoughts on it down below. Also leave down which Stephen King book you'd like me to review in the future because I do plan on eventually reviewing uh, most of his books. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them, but I definitely want to get to at least a lot of the major ones and my favorites and then maybe even like my really really least favorites for fun ranty reviews those are always fun but this was not a ranty review i really enjoy this book i think it's even somewhat of an underrated book even though it's everyone knows cujo like even non-stephen king fans have heard of cujo it's not beloved by a lot of king fans which i think is a shame because it's one of my favorites so, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this really ranty, spoiler-filled review of Cujo. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And I also have the Bookish Charmer Discord, where we have the Stephen King Short Story Book Club still going strong, at least for a few more months. And we have the Buddy Read coming up for his newest book, You Like It Darker, which will include... A, a sequel to Cujo. I have no idea what that's going to look like, but I'm definitely interested in checking it out. And we'll have a buddy read channel for that open in May. 
Um, yeah, and then I also have my Patreon page and my Amazon wish list. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day.